we can confirm without a doubt is our equipment is on the surface of the moon and we are transmitting. So congratulations, IM team. We'll see how much more we can get from that. For the first time in more than 50 years, an American spacecraft has touched down on the surface of the moon. The Odysseus lunar lander, developed by Houston-based company Intuitive Machines, touching down at 323 local time near a crater called Malapert, submitting back a pretty weak signal, though, so far. With more on today's historic landing, we are joined by retired U.S. astronaut Dr. Garrett Reisman. Dr. Reisman, last time you joined us, you were in studio. We'll take you any way we can get you. Thanks for <laughs> your time this evening. Uh, let's talk about the moment. It actually took several minutes uh, almost anticlimactic when it's mission control lost communication with uh, Nova C itself. We haven't seen any pictures yet. Uh, what's your take? What went wrong? What do you know? Well, you know, it, one of the challenges with landing on the South Pole of the Moon are uh, communication challenges. So it's not terribly surprising that they initially had a problem trying to establish communication after it landed. Uh, hopefully that uh, will be resolved and they'll be able to get good data. It's not clear if that problem is going to persist and how it will affect the mission. I think time will, will tell. But uh, there's just the very fact that they managed to soft land on the moon, something, as you pointed out, we haven't done for 50 years, is an impressive achievement. I mean, because when you think about Neil Armstrong, of course, landing in the moon back in 1969, uh, we had live pictures of that, is basically this is a different part of the moon and that's what makes it more complicated? Yes, it's more complicated going to the South Pole of the Moon because of the terrain, because of the lighting conditions. And most importantly, you, you, you pointed out that uh, back in 1969, they had something very important that we did not have today, which was Neil Armstrong. <laughs> uh, we actually had a pilot in there. And, it, you know, it just if you look at YouTube videos of self-driving cars and some of their foibles, you know, this is a difficult problem. They're doing this fully autonomous. Nobody was inside that lander. Uh, nobody from the ground was controlling it either. It was all controlled by onboard software yeah. and automation, and it had to work perfectly. And, and uh, it, it, by large part, it looks like it did. I love that the astronaut is making the case for astronauts, Marlon. <laughs> <laughs> Cannot blame him on yeah. that. Okay, so, <laughs> of course, this is the first probe uh, the, since Apollo 17. Uh, in 1972, this mission is next, so it's been 50 plus years. Why has it taken us so long to get back there? Well, you know, well, we didn't try, first of all. So, uh, you know, we had other missions. We were, we were building a space station. We had the James Webb Space Telescope, the Hubble. We were sending probes to Mars. What's renewed interest in the moon are two things. One, the discovery of water, which is why we're going to the south pole of the moon, because that's where the ice is. And that water is really important because you can drink it uh, for humans to settle there. You could breathe the oxygen you can make if you separate the water into the H2 and the O. And the H2, the hydrogen, you could use potentially as a fuel. So uh, there's th that led us back there because there are resources we can use. And then the, the growing international competition. Now you have China. You have uh, India uh, put a rover on the moon. Uh, we have uh, also Japan had a recent landing. So now there are five countries, not just two, that have been on the lunar surface. Hmm. So what did this thing bring with it, and, and what's it going to be doing? Well, really, it's, it's m m mostly a technology demonstration. We're trying to set the stage for future crew missions when we send people back to the moon. And it's got a bunch of navigation and, and other technology uh, devices, sensors, and, 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 and equipment that will be useful later that we want to try out uh, while we have an opportunity to experiment with uh, without people on board where we can't really take too many risks. So this is an opportunity to test out all of our technologies that we we'll use later. It's also going to be a permanent beacon. It has mirrors on board, reflectors that can be used for lasers uh, to triangulate position for navigation when we go back with people. Um, and so there's a lot of a lot of technologies being tried out. And, and then we have more coming. So this is just the first of many landers that we hope to put on the moon before we send people back. Mm. It is amazing. And Intuitive Machines uh, on X put out a tweet recently in the last few minutes, in fact, saying that we expect to get data and pictures to you soon so we can look forward to that. Before we say goodbye, though, Dr. Reisman, who's the bobblehead behind you? <laughs> that's that's uh, that's me. Uh, it's embarrassing. It's, uh, <laughs> it's not like the Dodgers had a bobblehead day for me or anything. It's just some 
some person made that out of clay and you deserve my it. wife said you can't keep that in the house get it out of here so it's in my <laughs> office here at usc and and uh that's the only way i would place them allowed to keep it well as we like to say at usc <laughs> fight on uh, and great bobblehead uh yeah. thanks so right much yes. dr garrett reisman appreciate it